Scientists have just discovered a secret city on the ocean floor. Massive stone structures, sunken columns, and a harbor that has been slumbering on the seabed for thousands of years. The discovery of these mysterious structures could completely revolutionize our understanding of human history. Some are already saying that we've discovered Cleopatra's tomb. Excuse me? Be sure to stay tuned for the exciting original footage. A warm welcome, everyone. Today we're talking about ancient structures at the bottom of the ocean, and perhaps even Cleopatra's tomb. If you're as fascinated by archaeological sensations like these as I am, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel right now. Subscribing doesn't cost anything at all. You'll never miss spectacular discoveries from science and space again, and you're helping me a lot. Thank you very much, folks. Now let's get to this exciting discovery, west of Alexandria, where today only the deep blue Mediterranean Sea stretches out, once lay one of the most important cities of ancient Egypt, Taposiris Magna, a temple city of enormous proportions, an important trading port of the Ptolemaic period, and possibly even the final resting place of one of the most famous rulers in history, Cleopatra. But why might this sunken city hold the key to one of the greatest mysteries of antiquity? First, we need to understand how dramatically the Egyptian coastline has changed over the millennia. What lies underwater today was once flourishing mainland. Due to earthquakes, rising sea levels, and subsidence, Taposeris Magna gradually sank into the floods, and an entire civilization was swallowed by the sea. Archaeologist Dr. Kathleen Martinez has dedicated more than 20 years to exploring the sunken world. Originally a lawyer, she gave up her career to get to the bottom of a 2,000-year-old mystery. I can personally relate to that very well. For some reason, I also have two state law exams, but anyway, in any case, your persistence has paid off. Together with the famous Titanic discoverer Bob Ballard, she has now made spectacular finds that have amazed even experts. After 2,000 years, no one has ever been there. We are the first, said Dr. Martinez, about her discovery of the sunken harbor. And this statement carries weight, because ancient sources never mentioned a port at Taposiris Magna. The existence of this port facility was completely unknown to science. What the divers saw at a depth of 12 meters took their breath away. Stone structures over 6 meters high, massive columns, polished floors, and hundreds of amphorae from the Ptolemaic period. The remains speak for themselves. During Cleopatra's time, an important trading port flourished here, connecting the entire Mediterranean with Egypt. We're talking about nothing less than an archaeological sensation here. A discovery like this right before our eyes, no one would have thought it possible. Particularly fascinating is a 1,300-meter-long tunnel that connects the Temple of Taposiris Magna directly to the Mediterranean Sea. This underground passage ends in an area that researchers have named Salam V. It is another hotspot of archaeological activity. Here, divers found further evidence of a vibrant seafaring tradition. Ancient anchors made of stone and metal have been resting on the seabed for thousands of years. The find impressively confirms what historians have long suspected. Ancient Egypt was much more than just a land power. The Egyptian coasts were strategically important hubs for trade and cultural exchange with the ancient world. Ships from all over the Mediterranean docked here, loading goods and exchanging ideas. But Dr. Martinez and her team have made even more exciting discoveries. During excavations on the southern outer wall of the temple, they came across over 337 coins bearing Cleopatra's apple. Together with ritual vessels, oil lamps, a scarab amulet, and a bronze ring dedicated to the goddess Hathor, these finds paint a vivid picture of the last pharaohs in Egypt. But the absolute highlight was the discovery of the temple's foundation slabs. When we saw that, I can't explain it. It was one of the greatest moments of my life. Only the birth of my children was more important than that. Dr. Martinez enthuses about this find. These plaques provided definitive proof that the temple was dedicated to the goddess Isis, and thus directly connected to Cleopatra, who saw herself as the human embodiment of this goddess. And there is even more evidence. Dating of the finds revealed that the outer temple wall dates from the 1st century BC precisely from Cleopatra's time. However, many of the artifacts are even older and date back to a previous temple from the 4th century BC. This confirms historical records according to which the temple of Taposeres Magna was partially destroyed and then rebuilt. If we put all of this together, could we really be on the verge of discovering Cleopatra's tomb here, one of the holy grails of archaeology? 
Dr. Martinez has a compelling theory. Alexandria, the city itself, would have been the last place she would have been buried. The Romans would never have allowed her to rest in peace there next to Mark Antony. According to some sources, the Romans even wanted to bring Cleopatra to Rome and parade her in chains. Tapasieres Magna, on the other hand, is only 45 kilometers west of Alexandria. Close enough to allow her one last visit to Mark Antony, the Roman general and her lover, before her death, but far enough away to escape Roman capture. The complexity of the underground tunnel systems would have made it possible to move her remains unnoticed. No one can tell me that Cleopatra is not in Tapasieres Magna, insists Dr. Martinez. To say that, you would have to excavate the entire area and not find her. The exploration of this sunken city is only just beginning. Dr. Martinez is already planning the next excavation, both on land and underwater. Modern technology such as ground-penetrating radar has revealed further promising anomalies that the team intends to investigate. We will continue to explore and document the numerous archaeological remains at this site, Munkar and Paniorm the archaeologist promises. However, underwater archaeology presents special challenges. Not only technical difficulties lurk in the open waters off the coast, but also natural hazards. My team told me there was a poisonous fish in front of us, and I said, oh my god, and we were down there with no way out. Dr. Martinez recounted her diving experiences in an interview, but she did not let that deter her. The significance of this discovery goes far beyond Egyptology, as it is clear evidence of how interconnected the ancient world was. Trade routes connected cultures across thousands of kilometers. Ideas and technologies spread rapidly for the time, a kind of ancient globalism. What fascinates me so much about this is that this sunken city is practically right on our doorstep. The Mediterranean, which many of us have already flown over, and whose beaches we've jumped into the cool water from, still holds so many secrets. Who knows what sunken palaces, temples and cities are still down there waiting to be discovered? Dr. Martinez is convinced that she will find Cleopatra during her lifetime. And honestly, after all these spectacular finds, I believe she can do it. Her story also shows that it's worth following your dreams, even if everyone else thinks you're crazy. I mean, from successful lawyer to underwater archaeologist searching for the most famous queen in history, that's what I call a career change. For me, it was only enough to go from being a lawyer to a YouTuber, but hey, no complaints. I'll keep you updated on any further discoveries in Egypt. So feel free to subscribe to the channel now, and don't forget to give a thumbs up to help boost the YouTube algorithm. And now let's travel from Egypt to Germany. Just like in Tapasiris Magna, there was once a gigantic tidal wave here, but on the North Sea coast. Tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, all of these are possible in our beautiful country, and the latest findings are causing scientists a little concern. In which regions could a natural disaster occur? You can find out in the new video displayed at the top right, and if you can't get enough, you'll find another video on science and space at the bottom right. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, folks.